Fung's lighting model. So previously we developed our lighting model, we added a diffuse term and an ambient term. In the real world, objects have also something called the specular term, or the specular reflection. And here I asked an artist to draw me a donut. And she drew that kind of a donut. And uh, she added these like white spots on the donut. But when I render like a similar shape, a donut shape, with, uh, with our diffuse and ambient light, I don't get these white spots on the donut. So some uh, real world objects often have these shiny highlights, these specular highlights. And uh, this, is, this is actually a reflection of the light source, a specular reflection. So some surfaces shine as they reflect some light directly. So they don't only scatter it everywhere, like we saw with the diffuse reflection where light came in and scattered everywhere in all directions uniformly. Some surfaces also have this specular reflection. So where light comes in and some of the light directly reflects off. Now it depends on the surface, so some uh, of the light gets absorbed and then scattered everywhere and some of it reflects off. So there are actually two optical um, phenomena happening. One is where the light is scattered everywhere, and this is usually how objects get their color, at least non-metallic objects. And then there is some portion of the light that is specularly reflected off of it. And that reflected light usually doesn't have the color of the, of the base material. For example here, so we have some plastics, we have a black uh, plastic and a red plastic that have this specular highlight here. And you can see that while this plastic here is red, this highlight is white. So some part of the light reaching the surface gets absorbed by the red plastic and then scattered around everywhere as red light. And some part of the light gets reflected off of the surface right away. And this is what we see as this white highlight. This is the direct reflection of the light source, in this case the sun, from the surface. Now, here it turns out that the viewer's direction does affect how much of the highlight we see. So, in the rightmost case, light is coming in here, directly reflecting off at this angle. Well, it's the same angle on the left, but on the right, the viewer is looking also at this angle. So the vector v, the vector towards the viewer, is quite similar to the vector r, the reflected light viewer. So the light is reflected directly into the viewer's eye, or more or less towards the viewer's eye. While on the left example, the reflected light kind of misses the viewer. They might still see some portion of the highlight because it's not just like one direction where the light is reflecting off to, it's actually a spread but uh, because the angle between those two vectors is larger, um, they're less similar than over here, then on the left side, there's actually less reflected light reaching the viewer than on the right example. Now, when people uh, drew this diagram, they noticed that we can calculate this highlight the same way we did uh, before. So we used the cosine of the angle between the vectors to kind of measure the similarity. So we can do the same thing. We can take the cosine of the angle between the viewer direction, or to be more accurate, the direction towards the viewer and the reflected light vector r. So we have vector v, that's the direction towards the viewer, and vector r, that's the reflected light direction, and we can take the cosine, calculate it with a dot product, and add it to our lighting model. Now, it turns out that just the cosine is quite broad. The highlight would be way too big. So we want to make it more focused, more intense. So what we can do, we, we can take the dot product or the cosine to a power. And what power do we take it to? Well, we can call it the parameter shininess. And of course, we can add M and L. So the color of the specular highlight that comes from the material and the specular light color. Usually the material specular color is white. In case of non-metallic uh, objects or surfaces, that's that's usually the case. Uh, the highlights we see on them are white. With metals, it's, it's a bit more trickier, but usually that's uh, for non-metals, it's white. And then we have the color of the light source. So the color of the specular light source. This is usually the same as the color of the diffuse light source. So if we have a yellow bulb, then its highlight 
should also be yellow. If you have a blue bulb, which highlight should also be blue on the surfaces. Here are some examples uh, of this uh, shininess parameter, but this is from 3GS. So in 3GS, they actually have uh, another term uh, in, the f in, the, in the lighting model that does this uh, energy conservation. So that's why with shininess zero, you don't have any highlight. With shininess 30, you have these like softer highlights. 90, you have a bit, bit harsher ones and, and 300, you have these very intense highlights. But there is this another term uh, in the in the 3GS uh, library's uh, specular highlight calculation. So if you just use the formula that we came up with, then the example would be would be like this. So on the left, we have this shininess parameter set to set to zero. So you can see this extremely big highlight. So this is way too big. So we can increase the shininess parameter. So at at 20, we already have this nice highlight there. We can increase it further, make it make, make it more smaller, more tighter. But maybe let's leave it at, at, at some value here. Now about these colors. So if you set your specular color to, to red and your diffuse color also to red, or, or if they're the same color, then you don't see any highlight here because the light is shining on this uh, sphere and, and the highlight is also red, but the pixels cannot lit up any more red. So this is already full red, it's one zero zero. Even if the calculation says it's, it, it now has to be two zero zero, the monitor still cannot show you any more red than, than it does. That's why the specular color, the, why we see it in actual objects in the, in the real world, that's usually white. So we want to set that to white so that even if this object is fully lit and has this full red color or any color, uh, well, except white, but, but any, any other color except white that's fully, fully saturated, then uh, we still see this white highlight on it. Now this lighting model and, and this specular term was developed by Pui Duong Fong in the 70s. So in 73, in his uh, PhD dissertation, he proposed this, this model and in 75 there was this paper published. Unfortunately, he had uh, quite a um, short uh, life, so he died. Uh, and, and I think the paper was even published uh, posthumously. But I wanted to uh, read this, this paragraph from the paper. So they say that we do not expect to be able to display the object exactly as it would appear in reality, with texture, overcast shadows, etc. We hope only to display an image that approximates the real object closely enough to provide a certain degree of realism. So this dot product that we take between uh, the reflected light vector and, uh, and the viewer vector, uh, this isn't actually physically accurate. So this is just empirical. Uh, Mr. Fong looked at the vectors, they took the dot product so that it provides some degree of realism that wasn't, uh, wasn't uh, existing before, and that's, uh, that's, that's what was interesting about it. Now in the late 90s, uh, where 3D real-time 3D computer graphics became a thing, this Fong lighting model, it was everywhere. So everyone used this Fong specular term, the, the diffuse and ambient terms. Uh, so it became really, really popular. Only later in, in the year 2010s, uh, there was a, a switch to a more physically accurate uh, models. But this Fong, uh, Fong's lighting model still gives us a pretty good understanding on the, on the different optical phenomena and, and how to model it with, with really simple equations. So this is, uh, this is how it looks like uh, in, in full. So we have again the pixel intensity, we have the ambient term and the diffuse term from before, and we add the specular term which includes this v dot r raised to the power of shininess. And these are the vectors. So uh, when you feel like you get lost in, in, in this big equation, then imagine these vectors. So we have a vector towards the light. We have the surface normal. We have the reflected light vector. And we have the vector towards the viewer. Usually these vectors, like vectors towards the viewer, vector towards the light, they're pointing towards some important object. So to calculate light, we need to know where the light is. Uh, to calculate the specular highlight, we need to know where the viewer is. So we just take a vector from our current location towards that important object, we normalize it and we get this direction. To recap, we have the ambient term. It describes the uniform indirect light all around in the scene. We have the diffuse term, 
where we assume that when light is hitting a surface, it's diffusely scattered uniformly everywhere. And we have the specular term, where light is reaching the surface and directly reflecting off of the surface. And now if this reflected light reaches the viewer's eye, then we see this bright highlight uh, on that location. Very simple, once you understand these vectors and the dot products that we take between them. So from this video, you should understand the specular highlight. So some surfaces reflect light specularly, and the highlight is a reflection of the light source. So when we see these bright spots on some uh, shiny, glossy, uh, greasy donut, then uh, these are the uh, direct reflections of the light source. Maybe the sun, or maybe some lamps, or wherever the light is, is coming from. And you should understand now the Fong's lighting model. The ambient, diffuse and specular terms in that lighting model. And that the specular highlight, well that's just the cosine of the angle between R and V raised to some power. And it's a very simple model, uh, very easy to learn, and, and it was extremely common around the 2000s.